Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with futuristic facial hair, because this week we watched The Mysterious Planet. Written by Robert Somehow Still Around Holmes. <laughs> Directed by Nicholas Mallet. And aired in September of 1986. So pretty fitting that uh, uh, a serial involving a trial would be directed by Nicholas Mallet. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that, but I'm pretty sure we've never had Nicholas Mallet on the show before. Yeah, we haven't. So, um, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> so we're 18 months out from the previous season, with uh, well, a, a week out. A week out for us. us. From yeah. uh, for us. <laughs> we know we should have actually just waited out the 18 months. <laughs> just taken an 18-month hiatus <laughs> just to see what it was like. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, we have a new intro theme, title theme right. for the show. Right. And it's a lot uh, weaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot weirder, too. Uh, it's, it's sort of... It, it almost sounds like... A, a crappy fan remix, to be honest. Well, <clears throat> which I mean, okay. it might might actually okay. be what it so, is. So the like really impressive thing that I was going to tell you before we started recording, you were like, "No, no, you'll forget to say it on recording if you say it." Um, so apparently, it was pretty late in the production cycle, and Jane, so Jane T hired Dominic Glenn to do the incidental music for this serial. Yeah, he did a pretty good job. It was well. <laughs> If, if not good, it was a lot more present, I guess. And then um, pretty late in the process, he was like, hey, can you do a new title theme? You have a week. <laughs> and uh, and Glenn had just moved homes, so he hadn't, like, set up his home studio. Just moved homes. Anyway. Yeah, that's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he hadn't set up his home studio, and he didn't have a copy of Ron Grainer's sheet music. So he had to discern the melody by ear from... The original arrangement of the piece. Should have just listened to that, the <clears throat> Doctor Who theme as originally intended by Ron Greener. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <clears throat> yeah, so he turned it in a week and then he like kind of tweaked it over the couple months, but over the coming months between, because yeah. he was asked to do it March 27th and he had like a week till April 4th and they were like, okay, you have a week. And then he kind of tweaked it up until release in uh, September, I guess. So it's only used for this season. So, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, next season we'll get another new theme, which is just five weeks, six weeks from now. If you're listening to this show, <clears throat> yep. No changes to the title sequence, though. They just slapped the new theme on top and called it good. <laughs> So the serial opens with the doctor landing. Oh, it's, it opens it, oh, with that really cool scene. Yeah, it opens with this really expensive special effects scene. And and <clears> when you <throat> when you realize where the rest of the serial takes place, it's no surprise. Um, well, it's no surprise that that's so bad when like this is so expensive. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, J and T wanted to start with something big to draw in those viewers because apparently. The Six Doctors viewer numbers have been steadily declining. Yeah, and what's weird, I was just randomly looking at the wiki page for this serial, and the um, viewership was, like, really weird for this, because normally it, like, it goes, it's it's high in part one, and then it sort of just kind of declines or stays steady, mm -hmm. right? But here it was, like, I think 4.9 million for one and two, and then, like, 3.9 million <laughs> for three and four. It's, like, it steadily dropped, or, like, heavily dropped after um, mm. two, for some reason. Yep. So, shows on life support, so to speak. Which actually reminds me that I never mentioned... I remember mentioning once that JNT was basically the only one keeping the show alive at this point. And that's true, because apparently he didn't even want to produce this season. He wanted to move on to other shows. And then the BBC was like, we don't have any other shows for you. Also, we're cancelling Doctor Who if you leave. And he's like, ah, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> You'll find the doors are locked. <laughs> and he's like, ah, <laughs> man... And apparently Terrence Dudley, you know, that great director slash writer, yeah. he heard that J&T wanted to move on. And he wrote to J&T, was like, hey, I'll take over as producer from the show <laughs> if you want to leave. And J&T was like, oh, God, J yes, I have took to the, took the letter and was like, shredded it. <laughs> um, yeah, so he sticks around 
but and then by the time the season comes out, there are no more shows for him to move to, and he's like, ah oh, man, <laughs> now I've been locked in. So yeah. So um, this opening scene, though, like it looks really good. Like probably yeah. one of the best things visually on the show, if not the best. Yeah, um, I I wouldn't be opposed like to Wars. saying the best so far, at least. It, it looks almost on par with like Star Wars. <clears throat> Yeah, which is especially impressive given the TV budget slash props and materials they have to work with, yeah. Yeah. And then... (laughs) And then it cuts to uh, your your regular Doctor doctor Who set. (laughs) The the Doctor is like, ah, and he's just... I guess it's like a space court, space station court. Yeah. That's what I had assumed from the flyby special effects sequence. Yeah, I think they were landing at this, this court. This the, kangaroo court case, okay, actually not, but um, it's more of a wallaby court, you know. I don't know. <laughs> it's another marsupial, okay? <laughs> marsupial court. This week on marsupial court. Um, well, so I okay, I didn't know that trial of a time lord referred to an actual trial. I thought it was just like trials and tribulations. <laughs> You didn't no, know. You didn't know. But I know. I guess it's yeah. I guess it's an actual trial. Yeah, it's just ripped off from the war games. The second, the sixth doctor even mentions this. It's like I've already been on trial for my crimes, and the valley is like, like, yes, yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> also, we were too lenient. <laughs> it's like you exiled and me and forced me to regenerate. We're a bit too monotone. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so apparently they paid special attention to the costuming because um so the doctor in the courtroom is wearing like a red cravat and a pink watch chain but then in the scenes that are set in the past with perry he's wearing the same outfit as the previous season which is the blue cravat cravat sorry with the green watch chain Hmm. and apparently this whole overarching plot line is inspired by um a christmas carol so it's ghosts of christmas past present and future so this week we had a past story the next week was supposedly huh. having a present story, and the week after that, a future story that That's the doctor won't have a, won't have gone through yet when he's watching in the courtroom. I guess. I mean, the, <clears throat> as far as the trial scenes go, um, I wasn't like too on board with it until like episode four, which we'll get to. We'll get into when we get to episode four, but because um, I just found it kind of boring for a while, for a long while actually, and even into episode four it was also kind of boring. But the good thing about it. <laughs> Is that hopefully in I mean this this serial kind of did it and hopefully next week and the week after and this whole season do it actually but um instead of just drawing out the plot they can just cut to this <laughs> trial scene <laughs> you know which is what it seemed like they were doing yeah <clears throat> although this did have some 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 drawn out scenes in it. But it also had Actually, some witty courtroom banter. It was, I mean... I My favorite lines from the sewer came from the courtroom, which is when the doctor <laughs> was just casually referring to the Val Yard as the boat yard, graveyard, scrap yard, and various other yards. <clears throat> I don't know. I just... I thought it was just boring. Like, overall. To each their own, I suppose. It's, it is it is kind of a dumb, overarching plot, though, because, yeah, we've already had it, and two, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, what doesn't it make sense? Like, what doesn't make sense about it? Well, like I mean, yeah, the 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 fact the the re- why they're bringing him back doesn't make sense. But like, I think there's more. I mean, according to episode four, there's there's more to this that we don't know. So hopefully, okay, they go yeah, somewhere but, cool okay, with but it. take the track record of the show and <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, exactly. That's why I'm not really getting my hopes up. But I don't. Know, I just think it's like I just don't understand why they're putting him on trial now. Is like, the thing I think. I mean. Based because on episode four, I think they're going to reveal more of why this is happening, but at the I same would time, hope I don't so, know but like, if it's going to be in-depth or good at all. But Yeah, but it's like, it's been four incarnations since he was lost on trial, so I'm like, well, if they really had a problem with it, they just let him run amok for f- three in, three and a half incarnations, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah, they sentenced him to... Well, it's just one of those suspension of disbelief things, so just go with it. <laughs> Uh, it's difficult to suspend disbelief when in the serial the doctor's like you've already put me on trial <clears throat> yeah that's one of those things where like the writer calls it out but if he didn't then like the viewer wouldn't even maybe think about it yeah exactly I mean, um 
What I and did. I think it's a, it's a lot more noticeable for us too, since um, this, we watched the well, second yeah. Doctor like what that was like a one and a, one and well, a half to two years ago. Almost it was like two, two years ago. Actually, I think so, it was two. We finished yeah, the we second finished Doctor second actually about, like, at the same time as we're finishing the sixth Doctor. Um. Well, I did like that. I did like the other call out because they start so not the five rounds rapid. No, no, not that one. <laughs> no, so they start. Um, they start showing. Like this adventure with the Doctor and Perry, and immediately I'm like, why is it cut like a TV episode? And then later on, they make reference to this. They're like, yeah, so we can actually get the memories of people who aren't Time Lords, thanks to thanks to the fact that we bugged your TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, thanks to these underhanded methods, we uh, okay. That shouldn't be admissible in court. Oh yeah, the Doctor invokes his presidency again, and they were like, "You uh, left, too bad. yeah, you left Gallifrey for so long, you were deposed." <laughs> Maybe they have a dictator now. <laughs> dictator? Maybe it's the Valyard. Maybe. I mean, but, well, I, I mean, yeah, if he's the dictator, he would just just sentence the Doctor to immediate death. He wouldn't have to go through this whole trial thing. Yeah, the Valyard's hat was actually kind of annoying because it cast this weird shadow on his face. <laughs> <laughs> like if you if it wasn't straight on if you weren't looking at his face um directly from the front it was like half of it was obscured so the like trial not the the prosecutor right no the, the what's her name the yeah lady. her her hat was also kind of annoying because it was like the regular time lord hats but it was curved forward <clears throat> yeah um it was also blinged out <laughs> yeah it was it was <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, so yeah, they're watching this past adventure with the Doctor and Perry, who I guess isn't traveling with the Doctor anymore. They're watching so a she's serial. Been, she's been, yeah, they are. So she's been written out. So sort I guess of. we should give her a retrospective now. Um, well, she might appear next week. Yeah, I, I really, I don't know at this point. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know. <laughs> it's really kind of confusing, actually. Apparently, Nicola Bryant was like, yeah, so we tried to play the Doctor and Perry as like more as friends in this serial because it's been a couple months since the previous season. Yeah, the one thing about this serial is that um as you know compared to last season the doctor seems more of his I don't know, former self rather than his sixth doctor's a total dickwad self. <laughs> um, Which is better? But I don't know there's some, there's kind of like there's there's some borderline Mary Sue stuff near the end in this to be honest with the doctor. I mean, he's always like that, but that speech at the end was really drawn out and overplayed, but we'll get there. <clears throat> well, overplayed, maybe. Well, drawn out, maybe. Not necessarily overplayed. I, I mean, he's on trial. Well, that was like uh, right no, when... No, I mean the one with the draft row, where he's... Oh, the one with the draft the, like, row? The, like, three or four minutes where he's, like... It was drawn out. It could have been a minute. Row. could have been a minute. Uh, but we'll get there. <clears throat> so, um, they arrive on this planet... Um, and and this is where the the regular budget kicks in because it's just a, a forest, called, you know, nearby. Um, and uh, supposedly it's not Earth, but then you find out that it is. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they're walking around and Perry's like, "This looks like Earth," and Doc's like, "No, no, not Earth. It has the exact same mass and." Air atmosphere content is earth but it's not earth it's too far away from its official position and they cut to the trial scene and the doctor says something and they cut back and the scene they cut back to is the doctor and perry in the like subway tunnel and perry's like how do you explain this doctor marble arch and then <clears throat> but the thing about that was like well the doctor sort of plays it off and the thing about that was like maybe they use english here too because the, the doctor has that conveniently english manual so why couldn't they have conveniently English signs here on this not Earth planet? Yeah, well they <laughs> but just, it they immediately reveal it's Earth in episode well not immediately. In episode four they reveal that it's definitively Earth. Yeah, yeah. Is the word I was looking for. Um <clears throat> and so the doctor sort of reveals the backstory for this definitely not Earth planet was is that um Ravelox. Yeah, it was Ravelox. Ravioli, no. Uh mm. <laughs> Raviolox. Ravioli is okay. One of the best kinds of pasta. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> or do you disagree? I mean, not really, but <laughs> that's also like my opinion, man. Um, well, I don't think you can rank it like with other pastas because it's it's more than just the pasta itself. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why ravioli is so great is because it's so flexible. <laughs> Well, then, I mean, if you're going to judge it on that basis, then you can, like, if you're going to judge spaghetti, it can be more than just the pasta. It can be, like, stuff with it, you know, like, 
you know, veggies and, and, and mm, sauces it, and it's, meats. It's, it's difficult to spice up spaghetti, though. <laughs> I mean, it's compared to ravioli. I mean, I don't know. If, I, don't know I, I don't think that's... <laughs> I don't know. All right, I've, whatever. I've never had like a gourmet spaghetti dish. Okay. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> The, the, the sort of backstory here is that the, the surface of the planet got scorched um, <laughs> by, by, the sun? Uh, by a scorched earth policy. Okay, no. Um, <laughs> the best policy. Um, I don't know. I don't remember what from. It was like a sun or something? I think it was the sun. I think the implication is supposed to be that it's this is set after the sun goes like, um, not supernova, but it grows bigger and then just kind of fizzles out and burns out the earth. I think that's the implication. Uh, right. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Perry's like, that can't be true. Look at all this plant life. Anything left af- <laughs> after um, the visitation of that would be sterile. And I was like, anything at- left after the visitation would be <laughs> sterile. I mean, only if you lived in London <laughs> when it was burning down. <clears throat> well... Yeah, so I mean, Perry's yeah. showing off her botany skills again, I guess. She's like, these plants yeah, look guess. suspiciously like Earth. And then we meet Sabalom Glitz, the best <laughs> character in the serial. He, he was cool. He was fun. <laughs> Him and Dibber. <laughs> He's like, um, he, not remember? necessarily a bounty hunter, but like uh, just, an, he, just a freelancer, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> kind of like um, What's-His-Face Orsini, except a lot <laughs> funnier and better. <laughs> Um, and not an assassin. <laughs> I mean, not, se, not stri- Yeah, not strictly an assassin. <laughs> um, he he uh, he and Dibber kind of reminded me of um, what was the f- that the two guys from the first um, Key to Time story. Oh, uh, those two. I know who you're talking about. I don't yeah, remember the guys what the who story were there trying to called. scam the planet. Yeah, they kind of <clears> reminded <throat> me of those two guys. Um, and their sideburns were, were pretty sick. They yeah. looked like barcodes. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, surprisingly even barcodes, yeah. but barcodes nonetheless. Yeah, uh, they're, they're probably even because someone in the makeup department was the one cutting it. Yeah. I mean, if you try to do that yourself, you probably wouldn't end up with that even barcodes. Yeah, um, yeah and but the thing about... Um, their sideburns was that they were really distracting. Like whenever they were on screen, I just, I just, I honed in on those, on them. Yeah, well, maybe that was the point. Maybe, maybe. that's how they win. They like distract their enemy with their sideburns, and then while they're distracted, they just gun them down. It didn't really work for this serial, though. I mean, if that's the case, they didn't really employ it here. But maybe, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe they use that everywhere else. Okay, and well, not Ravelox. So I really liked them in the serial, but their first scene was like it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it did <laughs> because they're just standing there giving this exposition, yeah. <laughs> exposition by dialogue, and yeah. then they're like, "Man, we're here to find this treasure. Oh look, the Doctor and Perry. We better kill them." And oh then- look, those savages who aren't uh, in cahoots with the. I can't believe I just said in cahoots. <laughs> <laughs> never said that before in my life. Literally, never said that before. Uh, but there's a first time for everything, <laughs> and apparently that first time is on recording. <laughs> well, you're forgetting the best part is when he lines up the shot with the doctor's head, and the doctor just goes, he just like steps off the hill he's on, and then he loses his shot, and he's like, darn, I hate when people get lucky. And I'm like, when you had the shot lined up. <clears throat> Dude, yeah. Sabalon Glitz. Sabalom. Sabalom, whatever. <laughs> he comes back, apparently. Yeah can't wait for that in this season (laughs) so yeah well he gets captured by the savages well okay so first he like chucks a grenade at them yeah (laughs) to to try to demonstrate his superior firepower but it's revealed the savages have guns too and he's like oh darn and he gets taken to katricia katrika katrika sorry (laughs) hurricane katrika (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um yeah she's like the leader of this tribe of the free i think it is yeah so it's a it's a matriarchal society is it matriarchal she says there's less women than men and that women have to take multiple husbands so that they can breed to it's, repopulate it's the earth definitely matriarchal matriarchal she's 100 percent in charge 
I mean, just because she's in charge doesn't necessarily and, mean it's matriarchal. Well, I mean, in the <clears throat> okay, not in the actual sense of like the exact definition of the word where it's passed down through women, but like yeah, in just the general sense where they're being led by a woman. Yes. Also the <laughs> okay. fact, also the fact that they take multiple husbands, uh, kind of indicates that they're in charge. Does it though? Yeah, because like. I feel like that would imply that there's subordinate because no, she not. she threat she's like I'm gonna f- she for- she tells Perry she's gonna force her to take multiple husbands. Well, because Perry doesn't want to. But if you think about like most real world patriarchal societies, it's like multiple wives. You know the. I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess that's a fair point. I think uh, I think just the 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 reason that Perry's not on board with that is because she doesn't want to have that happen, <laughs> and doesn't want to be stuck on this planet. With multiple husbands in this pretty awful <laughs> society, um, but yeah. Well, so the Doctor and Perry go into the caves, which are actually the subway tunnels, and then yeah. that leads into this futuristic H.G. Wells type yeah. thing, except backwards. <clears throat> um, and yeah, they're just kind of all chilling down there, and they. Well, they well, Perry they're, not, and Perry, they're not really chilling down there. <laughs> Perry they're and like the, dying down there. Yeah, Perry and the Doctor get separated because I think Perry gets captured by the savages. Yeah, <clears throat> do we really well. keep calling them the savages? I don't know. <laughs> That's I mean, what Sabalom I mean, okay, Blitz call I mean, them. It's nineteen. I was I I noticed this during while I was watching this. Is like it's nineteen eighty six. Um, and like I, they're still. Okay, we'll call the them the tribe savages? of the free. We'll like, call them the know. tribe of the free because that was their official name. Yeah, or just <clears> the the overworlders. I well, just the free. I think they call them the free because they were they were made of people Americans. who were no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's why they want Perry to join. No, because they were made up of people who were freed from the tyranny of the immortal. Yeah, slash Drathro. Yeah, they want Perry to join because she's 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 a, a freedom yen freed from the tyranny of of George the Third. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great time. This would be a great time to insert that song "America" at the end. <laughs> We're a time, PG your show. Your time's through, terrorists. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the doctor gets uh, sentenced to death by stoning, and uh, he <clears throat> takes out his umbrella and he blocks the, the stones, the and he gets, gets hit by a stone. He's like, ah, yeah, because he tries to drink some of their um, water. And they're like, that's not cool, man. So he tries to block the uh, onsalt. Onslaught? <laughs> the, 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 I was gonna the say onsalt? I was going to say assault, or I got I got onslaught and assault, like, <laughs> conflated, so. And then the val- he, he, like, boasts to the Valiard about how ingenious using the umbrella was. <laughs> and the Valiard's just like, why is this my job? Just kill me now. No, he's actually not like that. No. The Valiard's the one that instigated this trial. <laughs> no, the, the cliffhanger to episode one. So first it's like, it's just an inquiry, quote unquote inquiry, <laughs> into the doctor's dealings. And then the, at the end of episode one, the Valiard's like, we should make this a full-blown trial with the sentence of death. Yeah. And everyone's just like, Why? <laughs> Well, I mean, what's her face is like why everyone else kind of just sits there because they're extras. <laughs> Are they like the? I guess they're supposed to be the jury. Yep, they're the judge, jury, and executioner. Actually, no, the Valiard is is the. I, it, no, yeah. no, the the Valiard would be the prosecuting attorney. <clears throat> and or the judge, the, jury, or, and executioner. No, okay. <laughs> or the uh, the district attorney, or the attorney general, <laughs> the yeah. surgeon general. <laughs> Somehow I don't think the value is the Surgeon General. Hey, you never know. You never know. You can't say for sure. No, but I can make a pretty good guess. <laughs> but you can never know for sure. All right, what happens in episode two? Uh, in episode two... The doctor gets um, taken to draft, bro. Right. He's, he starts getting questioned by... Um, what was that guy's name? Uh... Um, the, the guy. <laughs> The important guy. The, with the black helmet and the black uniform? No, no, that was uh, Merdine. The other guy? Yeah. G- g- something with a G? Grell? Oh, there's the Inquisitor. Oh. Well, that was that was the the, the, the lady. lady. Um, Are you talking about Grell or Balazar? Uh, Balazar is the one who reads <clears throat> the books. Yeah, Balazar. <clears throat> um, yeah, they, there's a lot of like... 
I don't want to say clunky because I don't know if it's clunky, but it's like, really? That's the best you could do type, type dialogues? He's like, we have several books from the past, like Mobi Dick. I'm just like, really? That's well, the best you could do? I guess, it's, I guess it's supposed to emulate the like language drift yeah, that I, occurs I, over I, time. I, I know what it's supposed to be going for, and like I can forgive them because it's a four-episode TV story, but it's part of a you know ongoing TV show, so they don't really have time... Uh, or, or, or need to really flesh most of this out, but it's at the same time it's also like seriously. <laughs> I guess they can still read it because like they've mentioned Earth multiple times in the thing about the Canadian geese. <laughs> and I don't know, it was just kind of it was weird. Well, and I think sort of detracted from the setting rather than added to it. But I don't know. I don't know. I didn't notice it too much. Um, the the mobile dick thing was the worst. <laughs> The worst offender. What, you ever read Mobi Dick? <laughs> I've read Moby Dick. Mmm. You gotta read Mobi Dick. <laughs> the way better sequel? Yeah. <laughs> the whale comes back. <clears throat> <clears throat> Moby Dick 2. Return of <laughs> Moby. I don't know. <laughs> Moby Dick 2 Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. <laughs> okay, so the doctor gets taken to Drathro and Drathro's Drathro's okay, the, the immortal that the, yeah. the, the overworlders slash tribe of the free have, have mentioned. So this is unclear to me, but either Drathro brainwashed two of the people who lived in the base to help him, or he built two androids, and I don't really know no, which it was. No, they were they were um they were humans. But I think what it was was that Drathro they they were just brought into Drathro's uh, employ like when they were really young and they grew up with Drathro because they make they they tell the doc they think the doctor's a, a robot later and they're he tells them like hey I'm an organic and they're like whoa we haven't seen an organic in since since Drathro took us in yeah that's why I was confused because like, we haven't seen an organic and I'm like does that mean you're robots? yeah since Drathro took them in but this they <clears throat> you probably just missed it it was like in the beginning of episode two when the doctor's yeah. still talking with uh, what's their faces <clears throat> and they're like. Drath- Drathro always takes in two people to be his, uh... Yeah, I totally missed that line. Yeah. <clears throat> that would explain that. <clears throat> anyway, they steal some jelly babies from he the doctor's He always takes pocket. in two young boys to be his, uh... Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that... <laughs> so, Drathro's played by Roger Brierly. Well, not really played, just voiced. Apparently, they got him to do the voice, and then he found out he was going to be in the costume, and he's like, no! <laughs> so they got someone else to be in the costume. And and who who exactly is Roger Brierly? Don't know. I just wanted to mention that he didn't want to be in the costume, but he oh, still okay. wanted to voice Drathro. Oh. Oh, I mean, all right. You made it seem like he was a, a recurring guy. Well, I mean, no relation to David Brierly, who voiced K-9 for that one season. I assume no relation, although there might be. <laughs> Yeah, he used his, his inside connections to get inside Doctor Who and then denied getting inside Drathro. Oh, God. Yeah, I really want to get inside Drathro. Okay. Do you really, I'll though? Stop. That costume looks really top-heavy. Uh, all right. Nice deflection of all this sexual innuendo. <laughs> wow, thanks for just ruining the deflection. You could have just gone with it. You could have just gone with it. <clears throat> You can never just go with it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you yeah, definitely I, can. I can never just go with yeah, it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> um, so anyway, Drathro is like, hey, I've been here for 500 years. My black light system is running out. Right. <clears throat> well, I just realized black light... Is real? Yeah. <laughs> because the way they were saying it, they were putting the emphasis on like black light and not black light, which is how you would say in America, at least black light. <clears throat> Those two things you just said sounded exactly the same to me. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I guess they were saying black light instead of black light. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. It was kind of the inflection they were using threw me off. Yeah. Kind of like garage versus garage. <clears throat> um, yeah, I guess. Um the dog's yeah, like black it's, light's it's not real. Even... Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> but that connection only just happened for me right now. So the doctor was, uh, yeah, the doctor's like, black light's not my field, but I guess I can try. By pushing random buttons. Did you notice one of the things on the control panel looked like a giant thimble? <laughs> I didn't, but I did notice later when, um, what's his name? Black helmet dude. Was Mer- 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 Merdine? Merdine, yeah. Was 
when they were trying to Murloc? flip switches. No. <laughs> and the doctor tells Perry to tell him to flip the flashing lights, and he just goes on the same switch. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty funny, actually, but I guess it's also in universe because, or it makes sense in universe because they are just pushing random buttons at that point. <laughs> Perry's like, hey, what do I do? And the doctor's like, just push random buttons. <laughs> um, so meanwhile, back in the camp, Perry is thrown in jail with... With Sabalong Glitz. <laughs> yep. And they're like, hey, we came here to destroy this beacon that's going to destroy the planet. That's what destroyed the planet 500 years ago. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it provides the black light for draft bro. Right. Um, and it's also supposedly, according to them... Although I didn't know if this was true or not, because their true intentions were revealed later, so I don't know if they're just making all this up, but it's what brought on the apocalyptic sun impact thing. I think that was just them kind of... Uh, Lying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> waxing lyrical, so to speak, to, to Convince? Katrika. Oh, okay. Because <clears throat> Katrika was like, we praise and worship the holy totem, and right. then Glitz is all, the totem is what caused this destruction. They should have just been like, burn the heretic right there, but they didn't. Although they do attempt to burn Glitz in about two minutes. Yeah. They start building a pie. And, um, Dibber, Dibber? Yeah, how does Dibber escape? I don't even remember. No, okay, so <laughs> they're getting ready for the pie, and Dibber's like, seems pretty, uh, seems like a waste of wood. And oh, yeah. Glitz is like, what? And Dibber's like, I'll just go for a bullet in the back of her head. And Glitz is like, wow, <laughs> Perry, thanks. Perry agrees. She's like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Glitz mentions how bloodthirsty Perry is, and I was like, yeah, you know what? Actually, yeah, that is true. She is one of the most bloodthirsty companions. Her accent has pretty much gotten to the point, though, where I, ha- I don't notice it anymore, yeah, though. It, yeah, it's pretty good, actually, <clears throat> which is, like, almost a complete turnaround from, like, season 21, when we're like, wow, it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, so, you know, good well, on her. It's either that or we just got used to it, you know, one uh, of the two. No, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it's that. Although maybe it is, I don't know. Um, they kind of just uh, whoop de wop them. We gotta bring that term back. Whoop de wop them. <laughs> when is that getting put in the dictionary? Oxford, <laughs> let me know. Give me a call. Um, <clears throat> so uh, apparently they decided to have Perry uh, wear less revealing outfits starting now. Yeah, apparently they got complaints at the BBC. <laughs> <clears throat> um, which yeah, I mean, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. If, like little kids are watching this. She's wearing sure. what she, she's wearing like yellow slacks this cereal. Yeah, I don't know. With this, like striped like a vertically striped yellow and white jacket. Like pins what I don't know. Pinstripes? Was yeah, it? I don't know. I guess. I and then like a yellow I guess T shirt or V neck. I don't know. I don't I don't know. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that it's more practical. Doesn't matter because she doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> well, um, she does something. Oh, she pushes random buttons at the yeah, end. Yeah. What if? She, yeah, I guess she 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 saved the day, as far as we know. I mean, she didn't save Drathro, but uh, she almost gets blown up at an, in that explosion too. So maybe the doctor's still secretly trying to <laughs> off Barry. Um. The doctor yeah, I escaped. guess they just I guess they did just kind of abandon I, I mentioned at the beginning of this episode how I liked how the doctor's not being as much of a dickwad, but I guess they kind of just abandoned that character as or that that uh character trait. Or maybe it was just Robert Holmes, because I think we mentioned last season yeah, two that it was toned toned down in the two doctors compared to the serials around yeah. it. Yeah, it might might just be. <clears throat> so yeah, we might see it suddenly resurge next week. He he was kind of a snark lord in the trial. Yeah, but the, but okay, but that was funny. Yeah, there was. They actually the Valyards like snark doesn't bef- doesn't fit you, Doctor. And I was like, wait, yes, it does. <laughs> this Doctor, this it does. Doctor, yeah, this Doctor. And yeah, the first Doctor. The Doctor, <laughs> the, six, the sixth Doctor, casually is like just messing up the Valyard's name. I think I mentioned this earlier, but he's like, you know, I think the boatyard might be better served not in the courtroom. Maybe you should go become like a scrapyard. And I was like, ha ha, see what you're doing there. Yeah. Anyway, the doctor tells Drathro that the beacon is going to blow up and kill him and he has to go up to fix it. And Drathro's like, you're just trying to trick me. And I'm like, well, in any normal serial, yeah, he would be, but except this week, he's actually not. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, Drathro is also um, we didn't mention starving his people 
when he doesn't yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they have this whole backstory where Drathro and the people in the base were like sent from Andromeda. No. Yes, something like that. And they were supposed to come and be rescued later on or checked on because they, they're they underground and they think that the, the surface of the resist- planet is on fire. <laughs> yeah. Or that it's like uninhabitable. One, um, of, the, one of the, those two. But Black Helmet Dude is secretly... I yeah, keep Murloc. forgetting his name, so I'm Mer- just going to call Merdine. him Black Helmet Dude. <laughs> Black Helmet Dude. It keeps... Oh, the Valyard? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, keep sending up people to yeah, the surface. He's, yeah, he's like deflecting, or he's he's going against um, Drathro. And uh, there was this weird line where the doctor mentions that it was it's raining on the surface and that it was raining when he arrived. Did you notice that? Yeah. Because I was like, no, it wasn't. It <laughs> literally never saw it raining at all in this serial. Yeah, maybe he was trying to bluff. I mean, maybe. I don't remember Poorly. like wh- I don't remember why he says that, so I, I, I don't remember. I can't tell, so. Well, now he just electroshocks the two guys and Drathro. He's like, hold this, hold this, hold this, flips the switch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he runs into um, Unit 1 or whatever, because Drathro is like Unit 3. And then Unit 1 is like... Um, just a service bot, I yeah. guess. Well, he pulls the oldest trick in the book yeah, on the robot. Yeah. He's like, look over there. <laughs> and he gets away. Man, that robot was dumb. <laughs> Does so many dumb things later, too. <laughs> it was Unit 1, okay. <laughs> it was the first version. <laughs> um. So, meanwhile, Perry and... Um, Glitz, Glitz and Dibbler escape. Dibbler. Yeah, Dibber successfully blows up the beacon. Which basically sets in motion this long chain of events that leads to... To Drathro dying. <laughs> yeah. To getting melted. Well, okay, so this is where the trial sequences get a little confusing because the Doctor's like, see, I'm trying to save everyone there. If I hadn't been there, they would have all died. And the Valor's like, not true. If you hadn't been there, this wouldn't have all happened, which is like provably false by the fact that Glitz just <laughs> blows up the beacon right now and was intending to whether he met the Doctor or not. <clears throat> Yeah, that's that's the, that's the thing about this that I kind of didn't like is that it sort of goes like Mary Sue ish with the doc because the doctor always tries to like you know save people and he is kind of an infallible character which like isn't that great but at this point I've just come to accept it but here it was like it was played up so much that I was just like oh all right whatever <clears throat> I, I liked the doctor's speech to the council and it mess- his lines to the council in episode four, but his line to Dr- those lines to Drathro were like clear padding for the yeah. sake of padding. <clears throat> anyway, it I don't remember how episode two ends, but or just Rob Holmes going overboard with the look how great the doctor is, look how he can't do wrong thing. No, I think Rob Holmes's serials have always been, or at least have included some element of the doctor not possibly doing the best thing. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not <clears throat> sure. Um, but I, I just felt it was over. They went overboard with it in this. And I think quite a few writers like to put in that those moral ambiguities. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, it's 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 it's. it's I don't think not the doctor's necessarily every serial that he. I don't think he's necessarily infallible so much as he's the main character of the show, and if you make him like totally hopeless, then you won't watch the show. Type well, I mean, thing. You don't, you don't want the main character to be hopeless, but you want them to have like some flaw that they they have to overcome. Um, which which I mean, this show. One has a lot of writers, and two does that at times. Um, but I, just in this serial specifically, I felt it was like a bit overplayed. I agree to an extent. I will tell you, it gets better in the reboot, though. They like, get better at giving the Doctor flaws in the reboot. <clears throat> like I can pretty much point out the flaws of nine through twelve pretty easily. I. So anyway, in episode three, the Doctor just kind of runs. Well, oh, so oh, I remember how episode two ends. He runs outside with the guy with yeah. He makes it to the Balazar, surface with Balazar, and yeah. then they see Glitz, Perry, and Dibbler running towards the, or Dibber, yeah, Dibber running towards them, and they're like, "Quick, get back inside, get back inside!" And they go inside, and then it yeah, it ends there with them yeah. going back inside. And episode three, they oh, episode three and four were like. <laughs> more padding than content i mean uh, three in particular i think um which is kind of weird because they 
have the trial scenes too so like this is a pretty low content story yeah well uh, that, we didn't we didn't even mention that they went back to 25 minute episodes which yeah. is what the show should be <laughs> at least in like the classic a, series a, a lot better than those 45 minuteers but i mean probably the pacing in the reboot is a lot better than the well yeah because when they reboot it they like specifically redesign it to work for 45 minute series instead of trying to adapt to it midway yeah. through the run yeah um, another thing that I actually disliked about the trial sequences is that it kind of took all suspense out of the like. Well, you know the doctor's not going to die. Like, well, yeah, but like at the same time, it takes out the suspense of. You know, there was like at least some element of suspense. You're like, oh man, like how's the doctor getting out of this one? And then well, this is like the doctor. I mean, it cuts away to the doctor. And he's like, see, look at me, I'm so smart. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I to an extent, I think that's true. <clears throat> Which I guess might be more problem this week because it's a Paul story if it follows through with that whole Christmas Carol thing that I read. If they follow through. <laughs> Big if they. <there. laughs> that's that's the if for this show is like if they follow through with what they're trying to do, <laughs> like seventy five percent of the time they don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyway, they yeah I, on episode three I don't really uh, episode three um. Merdeen and Balazar have some discussion about how he needs to go to the surface and how Merdeen has been getting people to the surface this entire time and how, like, some other people are against that. And there was that that guy just looking around the corner, that scene where uh, Merdeen and Balazar were in profile, <laughs> yeah. and, like, that guy just peeks around the corner. Yeah, Greel or Grell. Yeah. Not Greel. <laughs> Magnus Greel. <clears throat> uh, Grell, I think, was his name. So, yeah, well... Yeah, who dies later. <laughs> well, uh, so gl- they all get captured, the whole posse of them, because episode two ends with, like, the tribe of the free are approaching on one side and the people in the base are approaching from the other side and then they get captured by the tribe. So they get taken to the surface and then they're hanging out, like, in the jail. And then all of a sudden, Unit 1 just busts through the wall <laughs> like the Kool-Aid oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. About, I forgot about that. <laughs> and then Glitz is like, Whoa. <laughs> Unit one, <laughs> and it's like looking for the doctor. The doctor's standing right there, it's like, "Hey, hello!" And then the doctor gets captured by Unit One. Yep. And then um, Glitz, Perry, and Dibba make an escape. They're like, "We gotta go!" And Katrika is like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, so they gun down Unit One. <laughs> Wait, really? They gun down Unit One? Yeah, and that's why they go into the tunnels because they think the immortal's dead because they think Unit One is the immortal. Unit One dies. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily well, for ca- dies for counting, Drath- for yeah. counting Drathro. <laughs> I don't mean Unit One didn't was it real <laughs> for counting Drathro. <laughs> Drathro like talked and had a personality though, and <clears throat> Unit One was just kind of a service bot. So you're you're saying. Animals and plants aren't alive, because and bacteria well, we, aren't alive. Yeah, we don't, they don't. We don't count animals they, and plants on the death count. So if yeah, you're making that you analogy, saying, well, in real life, we count them. So uh, but we don't count them for the show. We count them sometimes. We like <laughs> we're pretty we, inconsistent. We literally just count it whenever we want. So I, yeah, I guess we're not counting unit one. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, they gun down unit one. That's why they go into the cave because they think unit one is the immortal. And then Kashyyyk oh. is like, "The immortal's dead. Let's oh. go." Yeah, I wonder why they thought the immortal's dead. I thought she was just making that up. No. I was like, oh, whatever. I guess they just think the immortal's dead. No, yeah. So. The Which doc- was, is a weird concept in itself. <laughs> like, hey, the immortal's dead. So the doctor goes to the immortal again. Well, no, dra- for, no, first the tra- no, first the tribe of the free get there to Drathro, and then she, the Drathro <laughs> kills Katrika okay. and her right hand man. Yeah. And the tribe is like, Hell no, I'm out. And yeah, they just bail. This was actually funny because the right hand man guy, um, like slowly lifts his or he slowly uh, aims his gun at Drathro, and Drathro sort of just knocks it out of his hand slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with his his claw things, Katrika and the right hand man are dead. Yep. Um, they now the Poor doctor. Katrika. The doctor I don't comes like Katrika. in. <laughs> The doctor comes in with Glitz and Perry, and then well, they come into the the subway, and then there's this dramatic shot where Black Helmet dude is is 
well, it's really interesting, interestingly played out because the doc's like, oh no, and then the guy's like, I'm here to kill you. And then there's like a side shot of him holding the gun out and then he fires. And that's, and then that's the cliffhanger. And then you find out he was actually surprise firing at Grell or something. <laughs> yeah, he kills Grell and Grell. But and he's like, Grell, why did you make me do this? Yeah, I didn't get it because like, I thought he was going to like, at the beginning of the episode, it was like, oh, okay, he was, he was aiming at Grell. But then he like, he's so regretful of it. It was like, what? what did, he, is he, did he kill Grell? Like what happened yeah. to Grell? Okay. I think I guess he, he just kill- shoots him, but like really regrets it because yeah, because I think Grell was gonna kill the doctor and yeah, Mo, what's his name? Black helmet dude, Modine. Modine. Can't remember his name for some reason. <laughs> Modine realized the doctor was the only way they're gonna be free of Drathro's grasp, and yeah. Grell was just too close minded. Close minded. Yeah. So, this is close minded. Yeah. So they well they take Modine <laughs> takes the doctor to Drathro. And then Glitz, Perry, and Dibber show up, and they and meet then, with Balazar, and they're like, how could we get in? The doctor might need help. So yeah. they go through the, the food shoot. There's some censorship in the trial. They bleep out some of Glitz's lines. No, um, they just cut them out completely. <laughs> they just <laughs> cut forward. There was, No, there was like a, a bleeping sound. Yeah, because I think that was the cut forward. Oh, oh whatever. But, um... Yeah, this is where the trial started to get interesting for me. It was like, whoa, they're withholding information. Like, what don't we know? What's going on here? Yeah, and then we get the information because the lady's like, I demand we see the whole scene. Yeah, but I think there's more to this than meets the eye. Yeah, you think the, you think the Valiard might be doctoring evidence to make the doctor look bad? Well, I think there's more. That was my, that was my takeaway from it. <clears throat> I mean, I don't have any um, predictions, but I think there's more to, than meets the eye even than that. <laughs> but maybe I'm just getting my hopes up way too much. Um, yeah, so the, the real reason why Glitz and um, Dibber... Uh, went there was to steal this thing that Drathro has. It's like a database full of information about yeah. really advanced technology. Yeah, that they can sell to the highest bidder. Yeah, so and it's disguised as one of the little panels on the wall. I think. <laughs> so the doctor's trying to convince Drathro to shut down because if Drathro shuts down, then he'll be able to repair everything and it won't blow up. Drathro's like, no. This is a unique event, an event that might destroy the whole universe. I'm in. And the doctor's like, well, that backfired horribly. <laughs> what also backfires horribly is how the doctor tries to convince Drathro that organics are superior to robots. Yeah. <laughs> the doctor's like, organics make robots. And then Drathro's like, that means robots are better. <laughs> um, and this is where we get the drawn out scene of the doctor being like, hey, I want to save everyone and look how well, cool I am. I liked his message. I thought it was just terribly delivered and really badly drawn out yeah i mean <clears throat> it was too kind of on the nose i think um i mean it's not like i agree with drathro like who, who would <laughs> right like you're you're on the doctor's side for this definitely but at the same time it's like wow really uh, it, it, it is it is in character with the sixth doctor though <laughs> kind of pretentious uh over the topness i guess <clears throat> um I mean, yeah, I, I guess. So, well, Glitz and Dibber show up and they're like, we have black light on our ship. We'll take Drathro to our ship. And the doctor's like, yeah, yeah, good idea. And then they basically reveal to the doctor, yeah, we're just taking him because we want the information. You guys can deal with the explosion. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, this is they start flipping a bunch of switches and they're like, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Flip switches. Um, oh, there was this really weird line. I don't remember when this happens. Um but I think Balazar says it. Um, it would be murder to kill them. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wanted to point that out. Just wanted to point that spectacular line out. Some good dialogue right <laughs> there. So, yeah, this serial is actually the start of Eric Saywood's... Uh, slow decline de- into madness. No, no <laughs> slow decline into leaving the show. <laughs> because apparently he wasn't down with the whole trial of a Time Lord idea. And he didn't like the direction J&T was taking the show. So he started to fade on the show. And then he, he like took a leave of absence for a couple of weeks. And then he just quit at the end of the season. So, Well, he took the leave of absence so he could finish editing Robert Holmes's final script for this season. Because Holmes doesn't finish it because he dies. Um, wow, jerk. I'm just kidding. So Saywood, I think it's because he dies. Might be because he's just too sick to finish it. And Saywood finishes it and then he quits the show. <laughs> And then I, I read that the head of serials denies JNT's request for a new script editor <laughs> for now. So I guess we'll see what happens next season. Seems legit. 
So, um, uh, Glitz and Dibber are escaping, and Drathro gets, like, melted in the heat of, like... Well, I, don't I think know. he loses power because the machine blows oh, up. Oh, right, because, like, if the machine blows up, then he dies. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then so they're like, Drathro. oh, darn. But then they're like, we can sell the metal he's made of because it's worth millions. <laughs> Yeah, they come away with it. Um, they come away with this little piece of like the hardest metal in the universe, which I could I could have sworn we've already had like three hardest <laughs> metals in the universe. But hey, <laughs> so that's how it ends. Yep, um, the trial continues as as they they're gonna take a look at you know the next yeah the, the cliffhanger was <laughs> the cliffhanger was also kind of overacted by the Valyard. I think it's played by Michael something. He's like, at the end of it, we'll be calling for your death! And then it ends, and, and I'm then, like... And then it, it um, <laughs> we didn't mention, but the, the sting thing, sound effect, <laughs> is like, way less intense now. Yeah, but the explosion <laughs> is way more intense. <laughs> the explosion at the end of the out theme. Uh, so, yeah. First That's, serial yeah. of Trial of a Time Lord. Yep. Can you imagine if we did this in one week? Uh, yes. And it would be torture. Yeah. Aren't you glad we didn't? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I never actually wanted to do it all in one week. No, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was pretty surprised, stupidly enough, to find out that this was an actual trial. I thought it was just going to be like... We, a, a, did you think a, it was like Trials of do? Hercules type thing? Something like that, I guess. <clears throat> That would have been cool, actually, now that I think about it. Which, I mean, the key to time is sort of that, almost. Yeah. As is... Kind of. As is, um... No, I was gonna say Genesis of the Daleks, but that's just one thing that has to do. <laughs> that's just the Time Lords being, like... Jerks. Hey, <laughs> we're just gonna dump you on this planet. Yeah, I am curious to know if they're going to address the fact that they're not showing any uh, clips from the Doctor's previous incarnations. And they're just only, like, <laughs> <laughs> showing six Doctor serials. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it's just another one of those suspension of disbelief things, I guess. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I'm curious to see where this trial is going to go. I think we all know it ends with the Doctor probably being acquitted. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I guess it's the, uh, the thrill the journey of the adventure. The counts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, email us at the doctor at decorativevegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry ants, love letters, your testimony for the doctor's trial. Your alibi? No, <laughs> your <just> alibi. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> Where were you when you were watching this serial game? Okay. <laughs> I was in my dining room. <laughs> Uh, at home? Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, and Google Play, all at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you like the show. Check us on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor, like us on Facebook, also check us on Twitter at TYD Podcast, and follow us on Twitter. And next week, we continue with Trial of a Time Lord with Mind Warp. But until then, the end.